It's the moment you all have been waiting for, or I should say, haven't been waiting for, because I haven't told you about it. It's time to mod some fucking knuckles. I hope you guys are ready. It's gonna be a good video. So, we all have that one buddy who says, man, I would have had that drift if I had a little bit more angle. Well, we're in the business of making angle around here. And we'd like to remove all excuses from the equation. If you're not familiar with how a steering knuckle works, it's pretty simple. You have the pivot off the ball joint to the pivot for the actual tie rod end. And there's a little arm that comes off the knuckle. Some knuckles are flat. They're like a profile flat piece of metal. And some of them are a cast, one piece like this. And they have the spindle built in. You cut down the knuckle, removing length of the, uh, the arm right here, subsequently shortening it when you go to re-weld it, and then increasing the amount of rotation based off of the pickup point from the ball joint to the tie rod end. Super easy. So we're going to shorten this. The only complicated part in this whole equation is a little thing called Ackerman. Ackerman angle determines the difference that two knuckles will rotate through a path. So it's actually on uh, Engineering Explained along with a couple other videos. But basically, when you go to turn, one knuckle will not turn as far as the other because you want it to follow the turning radius of two different paths. So basically the inside wheel is going to turn more than the outside wheel because that's how an arc works pretty much or how a turning radius works. In some drifting applications, however, they cut down the knuckle and they make the knuckle a zero Ackerman knuckle. Why would you want to do this? Well, when you're drifting, you're kind of defeating the whole purpose of having Ackerman. You're not using the wheels in a fixed position. They are, you know, it's an induced slide. So the physics around it are a little different. And most of the time you would want them to be exactly the same because they are going to be running in parallel to each other and giving you a better grip coefficient than if you had a higher Ackerman. What's the downsides to Ackerman? If you take a, a regular knuckle and you cut it down to a zero Ackerman knuckle, you're going to run into a couple issues. One, you're probably going to scrub a tire. So if you're in a parking lot, you're daily driving your, your Miata or your 240 or whatever, and you got a zero Ackerman knuckle and they're exactly the same, whatever that outside tire is, is gonna scrub. It's gonna drag pretty much because it's not gonna be matching that inside tire as, as good as it can. It's gonna be over, it's gonna be exaggerated pretty much. <clears throat> so if you're gonna daily drive your car, a zero Ackerman knuckle is probably not for you. However, if you'd say purpose-built track car like the death cart, it doesn't make any sense why we wouldn't go with a zero Ackerman knuckle. We're not dailying the thing. We're probably not going to drive it a whole lot on the road except for when I get some plates and I want to go thrash. But even then, I'm taking that risk into account. Like I know that it's going to scrub the tire. I know it's going to mess it up. So it's not a big deal to me. And you can kind of see on here it has a little, has a little mark. That'll focus. Oh yeah, right there. See that? Where it starts to come back in? You're gonna cut that right about there on the S13. And then, and this is the same for S14, S15 knuckles as well. It's kind of hard to see, there's not a lot of light, but there's a little point where this comes together right there. You're gonna cut it right there as well. Pretty much chop out about an inch out of that arm. And that is going to give you a wicked amount of steering angle. And uh, it's also going to quicken the ratio up. So you're going to be able to steer a lot faster left and right. So if you've ever seen like the rally cars, uh, they have the steering quickener. Same principle. By shortening that arm, basically, you know, you're changing the ratio that that rack's going to move the knuckle. So... Instead of having a more leverage, it's going to have less leverage, but it's going to have less distance to travel. So let's, cut, let's get that cut down, and then we'll clean them up. 
and then we'll put them in our little jig that I made and uh, get them all welded up. So, since we got our pieces all cut here, right here, um, I was going to grab the jig off the top of the shelf, which is way, way up right there. Um, but it's missing pieces. So, I've done this enough times to where I'm going to wing it, which is not how you're supposed to do it. Don't do it this way. I mean, you can if you want but it's not how you're supposed to do it you're supposed to set it up in a jig so it doesn't move but like i said i'm impatient and i've already done this enough times to know what it needs to look like so i'm not real worried about it plus it's for my own shit so i don't really care but anyways um one tip i can give you for sure is you know tie rod ends are have a um excuse me a bevel to them or a pitch so like there's a big side and a small side don't weld the big side up because then you got to cut it back off um, some people preheat these before they weld them and other people don't um, I found that I can get away with not doing it because I'm TIG welding them I would think if you're gonna MIG weld them I would definitely preheat them but I'm gonna put a shitload of heat into these and do a bunch of passes. So I don't think I'm going to have any issues. I've never had any issues before. I shouldn't say that. I've had one set. One of the very, very first sets I've ever made uh, break. But that was it. I've never had a set since. And to be honest, that first set, I wasn't that great at welding. So I think we'll be all right.
All right, so we got these all welded up. They're looking pretty good. Took a little finagling without the jig to get them pretty even, but they're good to go. Uh, like I said, I don't recommend you doing that if you've never done anything like that before. But I've done these a lot, so I'm not really super worried about them uh, being uneven. Um, they're probably maybe a 32nd, maybe a 16th off. Uh, not going to make a difference for me. If you're going to daily it, like I said, build them on a jig. But for a track car like this, we're just trying to get some more angle out of them. And they're pretty close to zero or Ackerman. They're pretty flat on there. You can't really grab them because they're still hot. But they're flat and perpendicular to the brake caliper, which is what you're looking for when you're building a zero Ackerman knuckle. So tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and get the steering rack set up and the modified lower control arms with the notched subframe for the new uh, GTO pan and for the 5.3 that we're putting back into it. This is the new 5.3. Uh, the other one obviously is cacked if you guys have watched any of the videos. Um, busted out some custom tubular lower control arms and notched that the other day. I didn't shoot that video. But you guys are going to get to see it all come together and uh, see how much angle these bad boys put out. Alright guys, that's going to be it for today's video. As always, if you guys like the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And uh, please share it around. Try and get some more subscribers on this channel. Maybe we can get closer to giving away that uh, Camry. I don't know if it's still going to be a Camry, though. It might be something different. So maybe something a little better. All right, guys. Thanks again. Have a good day.